So the last few weeks I've been doing sort of a content dump with many of my ideas, philosophies, and practices that are associated with bioenergetics in particular. And so I figured today would be a good time to take a break and then answer some of the many questions that have been coming in. So I'm going to do that here today. Got some fantastic questions here about how to perform some of the exercises, what to do when you relate to one or many of the different neosomatotypes. I even have a question here about psychedelics. So I'm going to get to all that in a moment. But, you know, I just want to point out that this has been sort of cathartic for me. I've just been dumping whatever comes to my mind into this camera and uploading it. And it seems a lot of people have been enjoying it. So I'm just going to keep doing it. But uh, moving forward, my intention is to make this content um, more structured, more easily consumable, and more practical. So there are a number of things that I'm going to be doing here. I don't want to give you a heads up. So I'm taking all these videos and I'm going to be turning them into articles. I'm going to be building out a blog that has all the content organized in uh, categories as well as having resources linked and just go, being able to go deeper in many of the concepts that I've been sharing here. So you can look forward to that. It's going to be my new bioenergetic exercise website. It's going to be free to use and to benefit from. Also, you know, as I've been going through these questions, it's really tough to answer specific questions related to individuals without an assessment. Like even just being able to look at you, to see you, I can give better answers. I know they always say don't judge a book by its cover, but bioenergetic analysis, character structure, or what I'm having a fun time calling neosomatotypes plays a big part of why you're getting certain results or why you're struggling in certain ways with these exercises, in, with exercise in life and life in general, right? The way you look is what you are. It's the craziest thing. You know, we, we, we recognize that everybody's fingerprint is different, right? Two things you'll, you'll, you'll recognize as true. Everybody's got a different fingerprint and there's nobody that's like you, right? Your soul is different. And so it's the same way that you could be identified by your finger. It'll tell a lot about, you know, who you are, right? It'll identify you. You look like what you are. I'm trying to find a fancy way to say it, but you look like what you are. We look like what we are. And so by having an opportunity to see you, maybe ask you some questions, um, ask you to perform some assessments that give me an opportunity to see you in a dynamic way, would really be helpful if I'm going to be answering your questions. So something that I'm going to be doing here pretty soon is I'm just going to create maybe like a video ask form or a way for you to send me in video questions. And that way I can, you know, walk you through certain um, assessments and uh, give me more information, right? I need kinesthetic information in order to answer your questions more specifically for you. So you can look forward to those two new things. The website is coming out. I'm going to be sending you guys and or giving you an opportunity to ask me questions and gives me more information so that I can answer it more specifically for you. So that's coming. Cool. So without further delay, let's jump into these questions. I went through my phone and I just screen captured a bunch of questions. I'll get through as many of them as I can. I'm just starting with number one. And the first one that's come in from Shadow Weaver, he says, um, this was on my segmental breathing video. He says, I have a question. When I do that breathing, so he's talking about the segmental breathing video where I say, you lay down on your back, knees bent, and breathe with the mouth open. He says, uh, do I have to do it with the mouth open exclusively? I get dry throat very quickly. Plus, breathing through the mouth like this hyperventilates me. So, a few things. The reason why we do the open mouth, I think it's important to understand why, and then I'll tell you some modifications that you can make. So, when it comes to these bands of muscular armoring that we talked about, um, we tend to think about muscle tension being like in my shoulders or my low back. Most people complain about those areas because those are like sort of hinge areas. 
But the areas that are that are a bit more um, like uh, condensed, dense, and blocky, like the jaw, right? I mean, it's like our skull is all right here. And then like there's bone, there's tons of bone here, and then you got your vertebra right back here. So there's not a lot of like soft area, right? So for example, the like this is a small area with a lot of softness. Is only the the spine. This is a like a, a, a conduit or a segue between a very bony area and then another bony area, the ribcage, right? So we'll get, because those areas often have muscular imbalances, we'll be like, oh, I can really feel the difference. You know, you got neck problems. Same thing with low back problems, right? Because you got the rib cage, you got the hips, but then you just got the spine. And then, and then you have all these organs and then you have muscle that's supposed to hold the whole thing together. So people will think, oh yeah, let me do something for my low back pain. Let me do something for my neck pain. But very rarely do we think about how the jaw, or, or we're even conscious of how the jaw holds muscular tension. It, it becomes so chronic and deep-rooted into our character structure that it goes way over our head that um, we're holding jaw tension, j j and tension in the mouth. The mouth and the throat also, all sort of, all sort of connected, all sort of associated with the same um, segment. And so when we hold the mouth open, we do two very important things. We get to put pressure on the jaw muscles so that if there is any tension in there, it gets revealed and relieved. What do I mean by that? By stretching the jaw, by opening the mouth, you gotta stretch these muscles. And you may find, people may find, that just holding the mouth open is very difficult, <laughs> right? Where, like, the more I practice this, the more I can just... But if it's been a while, those muscles start growing tense and tight, then the mouth is like, it's a little lazier. And I've seen people who are doing these exercises and they're like, they just can't do it. Like, just within seconds, the mouth is going... Right? So we stretch the jaw muscles, which is going to affect a lot of what else is going on up here too, right? I found that when I was doing a lot of wide open mouth breathing, that I was thinking clearer, right? This may be crazy, but, but, but consider that if the brain is held tight, right? Because you got tension in your head, because these muscles, these jaw muscles, they like, I don't have a picture here of the jaw muscles. I, I gotta find a better way to like show you anat oh wait, anatomical charts. Here, look here. Here it is right here. See, like these muscles are way up into the head, right? Sternocleidomastoid. I think this probably comes down and ties into the jaw. Oh, there we go. Pieces of it there. It's sort of cut up, hard to see. But it's all very linked. It's all, all very attached. The other thing, so we're talking about the jaw, but also so the throat. When you open your mouth like this, you, open, you create space back here that allows better inflow and, and, and outflow of oxygen, of air, literally, not oxygen, but air. Because this area, especially up around C1 and like behind the nasal cavity, also holds a lot of tension and can become inflamed, uh, can become puffy. And so by opening your, you might find us, you might find that by opening the mouth and doing these, this exercise more and more over time, the, the muscles in the back of the throat start to recede. You're, you know, when you stretch a muscle, it gets softer, it gets, it's not as puffy, right? It gets, how could I say it? It's just, it relaxes, it relaxes, right? Like flex muscle is like puff, like tight and big. Relax muscle is loose and soft. So in the back of the throat, the same thing happens, right in the back of the throat. And so when you yawn, all that gets pushed back and opened up. Your whole, when you yawn, I'm feeling almost like a, like a, a ball, right? Like everything just recedes and opens back. And the reason why you yawn is because you need more oxygen. I mean, there's other there's psychosomatic reasons why people yawn too. But a lot of times, like when we're like just sitting down, we're bored and we're not breathing much, we go, 
<sighs> and what does that do? It brings a bunch of oxygen in or air in, but also creates a lot of room for air to come in. So you're, <gasps> you're sucking in and then you're, the whole passageway just opens up. And so when we have our mouth open like that and we breathe almost like we're yawning, it's, it mimics a yawn, which brings in more, brings in more. It's good to have more, right? If we're trying to charge the body, we're trying to open the inner tube, we're trying to break these neurotic holding patterns in a gentle way, this is what we want to do. But, you know, you're, there, there are ways around it too. And I, and I, I could talk to you guys a little bit about you really want to take the path of least resistance with these exercises, especially in the beginning. We don't want to force or push anything. We want to find like what works. So if you're having dry throat, right, and some other problems, you could do it with your mouth shut. But what I would encourage you to do is to do it with a yawn ball in the back of your mouth. <laughs> yawn ball. Not a yarn ball, not a ball of yarn, but an, op an opening of the throat. So it's almost like you're yawning, right? Do you ever do that? Like, try that. Open your throat like you're yawning, but keep your mouth closed. So I'm, right now I'm breathing through my nose, but everything in here is pushed back. and more open. And the way you know that you're, so that area is like really sensitive. Not only is it is like really sensitive to, you know, uh, being open or closed, it's very evident that it's sensitive because it'll affect your breath. It'll, I'm sorry, it'll affect your voice. Your voice, the voice can tell you a lot about a person's character structure and how, what they're, dealing with bioenergetically. That's why one of my most popular videos on my Elliot Hulse channel was like how to change your voice. And I was showing you a bunch of bioenergetics that will change your voice. My tendency is to speak harsh in my throat. I have a lot of tension in my throat. So my voice, I, my pitch will start getting higher and I'll start yelling and I'll start grinding my, my voice. A totally bad way to destroy your voice. But the more I relax my solar plexus, the more I open my throat, the more I relax my, the diaphragm in my throat, the l deeper my voice gets. And so I, you know, sometimes I'll watch my videos and be like, ah, I was a bit ungrounded that day. Or I'll watch a video and be like, hey, I'm staying cool, I'm staying calm, listen to my voice, right? And so one of the things that you can do in order to exercise but also assess what's going on with the back of your throat is hum. In order for me to hum that way, and this is like a, a very powerful, an awesome bioenergetic exercise that I, you know, I'm going to create a database of exercises and I'm going to, I'm going to do my best to organize and create all this and I'm doing it for free. I'm going to create all of it and you can, you can, you can use it and I'll show you different ways to use it based on what you're dealing with. That's all coming, you know, if, if it be God's plan and every day I pray and this is what's unfolding. So doing, doing deep throat opening humming. So in a way, I'm, I'm breathing bioenergetically, but on my exhale, I'm, breathe, I'm exhaling through my nose, but I'm humming and keeping my throat open. You'll notice that those, uh, now watch, I'm gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna do it with a more closed throat. So here's open throat. And I even feel like the muscles want to contract. They want to, they want to get in the way. And then here's so what it would be like if I allowed it to get in the way, if it's a, a closed throat hum. 
I mean, I feel it. It's higher. A more, a more, uh, a stronger vibration. More to the to the surface of my mouth, or coming up to the front of my mouth. More closed down here. So it's a lot of more. It's a lot of more constricted hum. For me to do the deep hum. I even have to open my heart. I even have to open my throat. All this is connected. The deeper it went, notice that my, my nasal cavity just opened. So you got to pay attention to yourself when you're doing a lot of the exercises that I'm going to be teaching you guys. They're, they're not like going to the gym and like you just move the joint, just do the thing. They become bioenergetic because of your consciousness. You're, you're paying attention to what's going on. And so when I said earlier that, you know, a lot of these exercises, you want to take the path of least resistance is because a lot of times there's literally resistance that is chronic. And as we're doing the exercise and we become conscious of the tension, two things happen. You become conscious of it and then you start to get really uncomfortable and it's like, I can't do this anymore like because it's paining me in this particular area. It's paining me. My hips start hurting or my feet start hurting or my, I noticed today my brow started hurting and I have another question here about eyes. I think I'm going to do that one next if I can find it. Uh, my eyes, my brow started hurting so I put my hands over my eyes and then my brow started to relax. So what you want to do is, as you're doing these, doing the exercise, doing, um, you know, I'm just going to call it exercise number one right now. I think people, I think I read in uh, Devaraj Sandberg's book. Devaraj has a YouTube channel about bioenergetics here. If you go and check him out, tell him I said hello. He also has some books. Uh, I think in one of his books he says that it's called the uh, Reikian Work Position. RWP maybe, Reikian Work Position. You know, I didn't make it up. You know, you're laying down the way I showed you in the previous video with your knees bent. So I'm just going to call it exercise number one because it's the first one that I'm teaching you guys. The first one that I'm teaching, stick with that. Like I said, don't overlook the power of this because of its simplicity. But as you're doing that exercise, start, continue to be present with your whole body. Scan your whole body. And when you start to feel uncomfortable or you start to feel bored or you start to check out, Notice what you're not noticing in your body and then go there. Go there and release it and relax it. So my breathing was starting to become, uh, it was starting to get more shallow. And I'm like, well, what's going on here? And I, I'm trying to stay focused with the breathing. I was, I was doing it this morning. Then I noticed once again, oh, it's the brow. The brow. I'm, I'm holding in the ocular second segment. The minute I relax that, Everything just relaxed and the breathing went deeper again and I was really able to go into it. That, you won't have those types of experiences of going deeper in the exercise unless you, what one of my teachers said, allow it to cook. Meaning like you, you it takes time. Like, you know, I've had clients where I tell them to do this for 20 minutes and then they're like, oh, you know, I could only do 10 minutes. I'm like, that's because you hit the 10 minute mark and th that's when the work began. That's when you needed to just go a little further. Because when you start checking out, because of the discomfort, that means there's resistance. And resistance is mental and physical. It's a, it's, it, the body and the mind is one thing, so it's a strategy. You start to get uncomfortable, you start to, then you might start questioning, why am I doing this, or this is not working, or you think about other things. And it's all a strategy to move away from the discomfort of noticing. There are things that we don't want to notice. We don't want to notice in our body. And when we do these exercises, they're about bringing consciousness into the body, bringing awareness into the body. But the body wants to keep you safe. The body doesn't want to change. This is why people will live their whole lives the same way, because un the unconscious is ruling them from the shadows. When you're doing body work, you're digging into the shadows. There's a book I have here called The Body is the Shadow. I think this is it. The body as shadow, the body as shadow, the Reichen, about Jung and Reich, the body as shadow, the body is the shadow. 
and the body does not, and the shadow doesn't like to be exposed. <laughs> so you got to set yourself on a timer and do these exercises. And as risk, as, as resistance arises in your body, this is the easiest exercise. All you're doing is laying down, but you'll, you'll experience discomfort. You'll experience discomfort in your body. You'll experience discomfort in your breathing and you'll discomfort mental dis discomfort. That's when you have to keep going. But, okay, there's a lot going on here. You can use will and force to break through those resistances, which is one way to do it. And when I, I'm going to teach you guys about catharsis later on. I don't think catharsis is as necessary. It's fast. It's like bang, breaking through. But it also leaves you with a lot of unresolved shit if it's not contained properly. And I experienced that. Someone else asked me about psychedelics, and I might not get to that question today. I, you know, I, don't, I think I'm going to try to keep these focused. Um, psychedelics sort of does the same thing as a deep, a fast catharsis, but that can also screw you up. It can screw you up because it's too fast. Uh, Dr. Glazier said it's like unzipping the unconscious. A lot of times with bioenergetics, especially if it's very cathartic and you're really trying to break through, it, it's, it can leave you more traumatized especially if you're not contained. And I don't think most, I don't think most people understand about containment. I don't, I, I don't think, unless they study Carl Jung, I don't think most psychotherapists understand about containment. And, you know, I, and you know, I'm not a professional, but I'm just going based on what I hear and what I see and what I've experienced from people. Um, and they're usually not going as deep as we do with the body too. Talking about something is not the same as doing something about it. And the only way you can really do something about it is to physically do something about it, breathing. So you have the breakthrough method, which uh, another way the breakthrough method is manifest is body work, like not just breathing, but body work. So I've worked with structural energetic therapists who, while I'm doing the breathing, they're working on my tissue. So they're like digging in pressure points and like, and so those pressure points, if you ever get like a deep tissue massage, but you have to bite your tongue because you're at a spa, like and you cringe, you're not getting the full energetic release that's associated with what wants to come out of the unconscious, what wants to rise up from the body. You're not getting the whole thing because you're biting it down. But when I used to work with the structural energetic therapist uh, in Tampa, his name was Alan Repas. He, he would work on my body and I would go, ah, and it wasn't, it wasn't, a, it wasn't an excruciating shout. It was literally releasing frequency, releasing vibration, right? What is a shout? Oh, I was toning, right? Cause like there's a shout that's a grueling, resistant ridden shout. There's that, but there, but you can release even more if you're relaxed and you go, oh, because you're, you're getting out of the way. You don't have the biting down and, and like you're resisting. If we could cry like babies cry, babies when they cry, the whole face just breaks. <laughs> Everything just breaks apart. All the neurotic holding patterns just, and you can see it in the face. It's just the whole mask drops. Adults, when we cry or release, it's a lot like, and we do this. Right? It's very different because we got, we got stronger egos. And that's, that's a part of the resistance. The ego is, the, is a resistance. The ego isn't the enemy. The ego is, is, a, is, a, is a construct that is designed to keep you safe and to help you navigate. But it'll keep you trapped, right? And so we never really get that release uh, because we don't allow ourselves to experience pain. And we don't know how to yield into the pain. Do you guys ever go like, you ever have to like get something painful done? Like a tattoo, right? Like tattoos. But like, I'm thinking more like dental work. You know, this shit is painful. I noticed even when I was a kid, when I was a kid, I remember the dentist would tell me, I was just a little kid and they were working my teeth and they said, if you 
have pain squeeze my hand. And then later they gave me a ball, they like, squeeze it harder. And so I was like, all right, I'm just gonna do what I'm told. So I felt pain and I start squeezing this thing. But the more I squeeze it, the more tense I got and the more pain I had. Because I'm resisting, right? It's like, it's pain, so I'm gonna go tighter. It don't work that way. So even as a kid, I started noticing, oh no, if I actually relax my hand, relax my shoulder, relax my face, and then breathe, oh, the pain is not as bad. This is evident in childbirthing also. A lot of women have to get babies cut out of their bellies because they have never taught how to relax into the pain, relax into the resistant, or they resist so there's no relaxing. relaxing. But there's, there's some unconscious resistance that they, you can release, you can relax into. But if you're tense, because, you know, there's a lot of different reasons why there's, you know, so many, so many birth complications and stuff and, you know, and C-sections, like, it's ridiculous. So they're all unnecessary. It has a lot to do with the errors in the medical system. I'm not going down that rabbit hole. But if taught how to give birth, nobody teaches a woman how to give birth. Nobody, they don't take any classes. They get very little, they get very little, uh, really good, timeless support or advice, right? Me and my wife, we did a, we took a whole bunch of classes. My wife, each baby came out, they just popped right out because she knows how to relax into pain. She learned how to relax into pain. When you relax into pain, it's kind of crazy. When you relax into pain, it becomes ecstatic. It becomes orgastic. You ever know something that hurts so good? <laughs> All of our pains can sort of hurt so good. You can go into a you can go into a psychedelic trip through pain. So I think some people that's what I think there's you call them like sadomasochists or masochists. Well, masochist. But like these people who like they they put themselves they, may, they hurt themselves in order to have this release. There's your body releases all kinds of neurotransmitters and stuff if you relax into the pain. Anyway, so I'm sort of going off off key here. So there's two ways you can blast through the pain, right? Will yourself through the pain so much so that your ego just collapses out of pure exhaustion. Or you could take the path of least resistance, which is to relax into the pain is what I'm talking about right now. So I know that that's sort of off on a different tangent with regard to you and your, your open mouth. But to f come full circle, if you're noticing that there's you know tension, that there's problems, that there's something going on in the throat that's not allowing you to breathe, but yet you have the open mouth and it's a, that stops you, Try to do it with an open throat. I think that's it. I think that's all. I don't think I'm going to answer another question. This video is already half an hour long. Done.